let me let me wage now in town. Your radio dial is tuned to 91.7 WMUH, Allentown. This is Midday Melodies, and I have a very special show lined up for you today. Uh, James Alex of Beach Slang is my musical guest here in the studio, and uh, we're getting everything together. It'll be right up shortly, but I'm going to get started with some music here. This one by Sloan kind of sums up everything today. If it feels good, do it. All right, and that was Beach Slang. From their album, A Loud Bash of Teenage Feelings and Beach Slang, James Alex is my guest here in the studio today. And uh, so glad you could join me today, James. How's it going? Yeah, it's going great. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me, man. Awesome. Uh, hey, Fix, yeah? Are we on? Am I live? I am. Hey, thanks yeah. so much for having me, man. I appreciate I appreciate you letting you me be here. Oh, there I'm at it. Oh, I'm a shy oh, guy. Right, I'm going to bash go. through those, those, uh, those barriers now. No, that's that's cool. great. So glad you could join me, and um, we're going to talk a lot today about uh, beach slang and uh, what you've been doing lately. Uh, how it you know how it started. I, I was saying to James earlier, uh, this this show is very very laid back. So mm -hmm. we're uh, you know I don't have all kinds of things written out and and all that stuff. But you know maybe you could talk for a second about. You know, you brought a lot of music today as we're sure. we're getting that all all together and ready. So, right um, you know, hopefully we'll be hearing some of that soon. Uh, I brought some of my own, so it's you know kind of a musical thing today. But who are some of your you know who who do you love right now? Like who who are I know some of your bigger influences. Yeah, but. sure. Well, yeah, man. I, you know, I'll sort of forever love yeah, but you know the replacements, of course. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I've, but but I've been I've been digging deeper back. I've, I've, I think I've sort of been reconnecting with the stuff I sort of when I first like was a real little kid and got like turned on to music and like you know like stuff like ACDC and like Cheap Trick and stuff like that. That where I first was like, oh, what is this thing that I want to do with you know that sort of right, woke me right. up to like the like you know when you're young and you just like sort of have all this sort of rambling little energy you don't know what to do with it, and then you hear a thing like I was such a straight laced kid like trying to just do good and. <laughs> sort of all the time but then i heard like like an ac dc record and it was like i felt sort of like a rock and roller you know and that's sure. sort of like yeah it sort of sort of sh shook me a little bit or woke me up or something it was like yeah i don't know i sort of that sort of i suppose that was that was sort of changed the course of what i was going to do you know right yeah right. yeah yeah that's kind of how i feel like it was it was like you know listen to rod stewart and then i heard iron maiden oh sure but yeah. that, and i yeah. who i loved yeah, and yeah. Then, you know the heavy metal and then i found there was more there right was more right. and you know you kind of just grasp onto what's going more well that's more, it right so, yeah you get yeah. you get turned on you sort of start climbing that ladder but then it's like you, you sort of figure out what those bands were listening to and it was like yeah and then you turn you on to that genre and then that genre sort of inspired new bands so it's like you know when you think about oh yeah okay I, I finally heard the new york dolls who like oh like johnny thunder so it's like so it's like the rolling stones and it was like uh new york dolls and then it was like well the mats wanted to be you know sort of the dolls you know and it's sort of this like you sort of follow that line, and it's kind of like it walks you into something where it's like, wow, I feel really lucky to have found these things. You know? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, that's great. That. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got plenty of beach slang. We're going to get to some music uh, right now, but James is going to hang out for the entire show. We're going to be here with Midday Melodies until 2 o'clock, and uh, he'll be playing some songs uh, on his acoustic, so that'll be pretty exciting. We're going to hear a new single from the upcoming album as well a little, little bit later on, so... Be sure to stay tuned. I'm not taking any requests or anything today because we have plenty of music coming up. But I'm going to play uh, one of his favorites and one of mine, Replacements. This is a really great alternate version of Can't Hardly Wait. It's called the Tim version. It rocks. And you are tuned to 91.7 WMUH Allentown. This is Midday Melodies. And we are here live in the studio with Beach Slang. I'm going to... Take an opportunity to tell you what you heard. That was Duval doing Standing at the Door for that Red Cross, Stay Away from Downtown, and The Replacements, an alternate version called the Tim version of Can't Hardly Wait. So uh, we got plenty of show left. It's uh, 1227, and we're here with James Alex and uh, Charlie of Beach Slang. How's, uh, how's it going today? It's going well. Excellent. It's better now that Charlie's here and joined us. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, so... Um, I think it's about time for James to play us a song. And you want to talk about what song uh, 
Sure, yeah, I was going to play this song called Noisy Heaven. It's off the first full length, and uh, we start the shows like this, so I figured I'd start this show with this. Excellent. Sort of, uh, All right, right, well, let's hear it. All right. The night is alive, it's loud and I'm drunk. Kissing a mic and singing about us. The songs that I make, I barely rehearse them. They're hardly mistakes, they're meant to be honest. So let's talk just for a second or two about how, um, sure. you know, you played in quite a few other bands in, in your time, and how did, when and how did you decide to, you know, to give birth to, to Beach Slang? Sure, yeah, I mean, it was com it was unplanned, man. I, I sort of always refer to it as, like, sort of an accidental band. I just was like, I don't know, I suppose if you, like, write songs or, or paint paintings or anything like that, you just, you don't know how to not do that. So right. I was just, so I was just kind of quietly doing that, just in my room, not releasing these things or whatever, and just one day I, I, pl I played a couple of things that I had that, that became some of the first songs on the first EP and a friend heard them and was just like you know I, these are just too good to just sort of like die with no one hearing them so I was like oh yeah you, th you think so so we went in and like cut a seven inch thinking like nothing would happen I like moved to California like before it came out or whatever and then it's sort of like people were like this isn't half bad right so, I, so then I was <laughs> like man I, let me maybe maybe i can maybe i can do this again like as a like really give it a go so you know flew back flew back to the to the east coast and i've just sort of been touring since and you know but yeah gave it a go you did it, it, yes. thanks man yeah, you, yeah that's the one thing i do you know I, I don't know if people realize how much your you know beach slang is actually on tour yeah yeah i mean i think we're out charlie what would you say i mean it's it's got to be a seven eight seven, months a year eight months of the year yeah so it's like and, it, and it's strange we took this like sort of planned downtime over the last year or so for like make a record and just sort of like not have people get tired of us you know and like oh well sure yeah you know you need, you need rest i mean i've you know i've i've done right enough on. of this where i i know like sure yeah you, you know, go yeah. go 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 for nine or ten months a year for several years and then right, crash right. and burn for sure what, right you know what happens yeah so, so it was cool i mean it, it's created i think like lions in a cage you know, sure. everybody's really ready to roar sort of back out now with the new record and stuff coming out. But but it was it was really good. It was healthy. It was nice to get time to, to make a record and it not just be this crazy pressurey cookery thing. You know, I could actually rethink things, you know. Um, but yeah, but I'm ready to play shows again now. It's going to be pretty cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. Well, that's great. So we're going to actually uh, hear some music that uh, was curated by James and Charlie today. And... Uh, We'll hear more about 
Beach Slang's upcoming tour and their uh, upcoming new album uh, very soon. We'll hear a new single later on, too. I'm going to play this one that he picked, uh, Lou Reed. This is Dirty Boulevard. And that was Boomtown Rats, She's So Modern. Before that, we heard Super Drag, Feeling Like I Do, Psychedelic Furs, Heaven, and Lou Reed from the album New York, Dirty Boulevard. And those were all picked by uh, James and Charlie of Beach Slang, who are here live in the studio with us today, uh, hanging out, being laid back, talking about uh, all things slang. So um, the, what I wanted to talk a little bit about now was... Um, you have a new album coming out. Uh, January 10th of next year is the release date. The album's entitled The Deadbeat Bang of Heartbreak City. And um, where? Uh, talk a little bit about the record. Like, where did you record it? And, you know, how many songs? Little, you know, give, yeah. give everybody a little teaser for it. Sure, right on. Yeah, I think we did 11 songs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, 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 and we cut it at a few different studios, most notably at, at GCR in uh, Buffalo. Um, it's like Robbie, the bassist from the Goo Goo Dolls, owns that spot and had us up to do a seven inch and we really sort of hit it off. So, so yeah, we went up there to cut the bulk of that record. And then um, we did some stuff, like Tommy Stinson played from the Mats, played bass on it. So we That's did, amazing. Is That's, it, it, it's, it's awesome. Honestly, because I was on cloud, you know, 59, right? It was just <laughs> like, because when he was cutting bass, like I was playing guitar live with him. We were just like standing a couple of feet away from each other, just... Um, and it would be weird. I was like kid with posters on my wall kind of vibe, right? Because they'd make those faces like I have in like, you know, replacements photos. And I'm like, this is really happening. And I would look at Charlie like, I'm sure like a kid at Christmas, right? And um, so, so we cut some stuff at his studio. I, 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 did, I did some stuff at a, at a local studio. And I did some stuff in my room, just sort of like some, some sort of weirdo extra, extra bit. So, so yeah, so it was, just, it was sort of that thing. And then, um, uh, you know, Brad Wood mixed it. Awesome. Um, we've done some yeah. like, stuff I really love, like Liz Fair and Smashing Pumpkins and stuff. So, it, yeah, I mean, it's sort of the most, I, I don't know, I, I, it's, it's the loudest record we've ever done, which is... You know, I would think with Brad Wood mixing it, he's, he's got some heavy, uh, heavy hitters it, under his belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it, it definitely is it's sort of rattling the speakers, I suppose, compared to like the earlier stuff. But yeah, I, um, you know, worked really hard on it, sort of exhumed, you know, myself doing it and... I, I don't know, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm really happy with how it came out, if that's okay to say. Like, I say that humbly, but, but I'm happy and I'm excited to play some new songs. I mean, I, I haven't no, put glad, out a record. You no, know, I'm glad to hear you say that, too, because, sure. you know, how everyone is their own biggest critic. Well, that's just <laughs> it, yeah. Especially, uh, you know, sometimes musicians, I know musicians that are like, ah, that's terrible. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, But I'm yeah. glad to hear, you know, I'm glad right to hear on. you say the, how, how happy you are with yeah, it. So that's man. great. Yeah, and I, I cracked my knuckles in a lot making it. You know, it's like, oh, this is trash. This is, this might be all right. All that kind of stuff. But I sure. think where it, like, netted out, I was like, okay, this is a record I'm going to, like, sort of chuck out into the world. And I think people will be like, yeah, okay. You know, as opposed to, like, oh. Right. So, so yeah, man, I am. Um, yeah, and I have, you know, I, we haven't put a record out since 2016. So it feels good to just... I don't know, even it shows be able to play some new songs. You sure, know? Like, yeah, you're not, like, you know, at that three-year time frame between, you're not forcing it. You know, I've so many times, it. like, it's unfortunate with a lot of bands, like, do a record, and then a year later, do another record, and it's trying to tour and churn out records. Sure. You know, you you, you got to be concerned that the quality of the music is just kind of, you, you don't get to do what you want to do because you're forced to churn out that many, that much music. That's it, man. Yeah, like, nice it's be able to break you know that's right yeah the band started like so like the first year it was like two eps that year like a full length the next year a second full length the year after that it was like it was just that sort of rapid right. sort of thing so it was and i know you did breathe. the album with with quiet slang too and sure. that was more just was that just kind of leftovers or was it songs you had written that just didn't get recorded with with the full band you decided to just yeah i mean rip. A, yeah i mean a lot of it was like did it with the loud sort of thing but there was always this like i, I sort of live in my head i think that it's a crash point between the replacements and the magnetic fields right okay. so, I, so i always have this love for like right. piano and cello yeah. and i i don't I, I suppose i don't get to do that a whole lot and yeah. then i i sort of was sort of at home I, I i can club on piano right i'm not like a pianist or whatever but i but enough to sort of be like i, I think this could be kind of all right in that format so just sort of rethought about them and then kind of did them in a way with these incredible players on cello and piano and they i don't know to me they've almost become the sort of i don't know sort of the marquee versions of some of those songs like they were like 
ah, like that's the way it's meant to be heard, you know, even right. though they, they might exist in the loud space as well. Like, I think some of the quiet stuff is like, ah, I didn't get it right the first time, I got it right the second time. Sure. You know? and so, yeah. do, now, do you play, when you play live, depending on your set time, do you play quiet slang songs plugged or is that something you just decided like we're gonna leave this as it is we're gonna leave it as it is charlie and i did one tour together um on that and it was i think it was everything we really hoped for mm -hmm. it was it was it felt pretty special and i think nice. that's where we want to leave that is right. sort of like you know should we should charlie and i do another quiet slang record at some point i think there'd be a tour for it and like we keep it at that like if it, if it connects with you and it matters a little bit like let's come to that and we'll have a good night in a bar together um, and if it's not your thing, cool, we'll come back and be loud the right, next time, right? right but it was I like, you. I That's think for awesome. the folks who showed up on that tour, it was it was really something else. Mm -hmm. I was sad to see that tour end, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. nice. And I wasn't yeah, blowing like, my throat out every night. I was, yeah, exactly. I was crooning, you know, as opposed to... <laughs> Sort of yelling so yeah. 42 cups of throat code <laughs> afterwards <laughs> exactly yeah. man yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so sure. um that's that's great so um we're gonna speak of blown out throats we're not gonna <laughs> stress everybody out too much so we're gonna get back to some music we're gonna hear the single from the album the deadbeat bang of heartbreak city beach slang coming out january 10th of this coming year this single is called bam rang rang this beach slang their latest single from their album the deadbeat bang of Heartbreak City single was called Bam Rang Rang. Amazing stuff. It, the oh. production on that is just so solid. Oh, big. Thanks, so man. It's that, great. Yeah. That, that means a lot. Yeah. yeah it's great. So, yeah. um,. I'm going to start guess... taking credit for things I had nothing to do with. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bix. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's. I can't wait to hear the rest of it. It comes out in January. And uh, I guess that's a better time to talk about uh, the tour that's coming up. You guys have a tour. I know you've been playing some shows here and there, kind of a warm-up, but maybe you want to talk. It's tour with the Goo Goo Dolls, which it is, is. going to be awesome. I can't maybe talk a little bit about that, where you're headed, where you're, you know. Yeah, it'll the be the dates. biggest. Yeah, I, I think the biggest rooms we've done on a tour so far. I mean, we've been lucky to, to tour with some really great stuff, but this one is just like, and my knees are knocking a touch, you know, it's like, sure. you, you know, any support tour, it's like that, right? But it's, I, I suppose it sort of wakes up that little, that growl in you too, because you're going out and every night sort of like a fight for it. You know, you're not, you're not like, you're not screeching to the choir. You're sort of like largely playing to a room of folks that may have heard your name or may have checked out something when they heard about the tour. But, and I dig that. It sort of keeps the edges sharp. Yeah, um, of course. And yeah, and that's just, you know. And you guys are the opener. We are. It's just that's, the two of us. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So we. We're going to do a few shows out, but we start with those guys on November 8th in Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. and Charlie, you can probably speak better to this. And then we're out for about three weeks or so. Yeah, like three weeks. Yeah, so it sort of loops back. I think the closest we get to home is there's like a, a Hershey PA show and an Atlantic City show. So those are the ones like right. I know like local friends are going to sort of make, I, th I think, make the, tr the trip out and sort of see us on a, on a stage that's probably way too big for us, you know? But yeah, that's, it's, it that's It's all part of the experience. Sure, I mean, man. I know I'll be, uh, I'll be hoping to come out and see that, but uh, right. that's that's great. So, Thanks, And man. then after you have any plans for touring in the new year, I, as we mentioned a little right, right. earlier in the show, you, Beach Slang is kind of a touring machine, so... Yeah, yeah, we sort of like, we're going to go out for like a week or so in January. Shh. Oh, I can't say it yet. No. Oh. Oops, okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that's, that. That's why I... I get to be here. That was, like the, that was the teaser. It didn't give away any plot lines. It just... Uh... Okay. Well, so there'll definitely be... They'll, <laughs> regardless of what it is, there'll definitely be stuff coming up in the new year. For, so for sure there will. That's great to hear. Awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, it's. we also mentioned this a bit earlier, um, kind of in passing, uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, James and I have known each other for a long time. Sure. In, uh, since the 90s, <laughs> as his old band Weston, he played in Weston for quite a few years, and we'll probably hear from some Weston later on, but we've spent many a days and <laughs> nights in uh, smelly vans doing, you know, awesome rock and roll tours, so it's, you know... It's been it's been cool to watch the you know watch the progression of of you know my my longtime friend going from going from that to you know to to beach slang so right it's on. it's a great thing and the two songs we're gonna hear more f of the songs that uh, James has picked in a little bit but these next two I actually picked out because these are ones that were uh, that that kind of meant a lot to me of, of all that time touring with you know roading for 
Weston everything and I remember like this first band I'm gonna play is Skip Loader and I found this in a dollar bin somewhere. It's one of those like dollar bin records like you know cutouts for you know cheap that looked awesome and I still listen to it a lot uh, to this day. The song's called Second Hand and uh, after that another one that we used to rock out to uh, the dentists is the name of the group. So uh, before I forget, also, uh, your dial is tuned to 91.7 WMUH Allentown from the campus of Muhlenberg College, the only station that matters. And if you're just joining us, I have Beach Slang here in the studio. James Alex and Charlie here with us today. So let's hear some Skip Loader, and then we'll hear probably some uh, Sugar, some Nick Logue, a lot of, a lot of great songs that they've picked out for us. So stay tuned. <laughs> 